and the and the other thing, you know, I, I think we did really really dialed into choreography on the battery swaps, and maybe we want to walk through that because I think that is something we um yeah really got pretty dialed in by the end of the race. Let's do that. So. Um, yeah, like I said, for 24 hour lemons, the rules is anyone who goes over the pit wall has to be in full safety gear. Mm -hmm. Uh, and because it's, uh, when you do refueling, you must have one person in full safety gear standing there with a fire extinguisher ready to go, which of course for a fueling pit stop with gas is very important yeah. um, in case fuel splashes on the hot brakes or whatever. Um, so for us, that rule still applies while we are refueling, which is the battery swap process. So it does take us three people. We have the driver who is getting out of the car. The driver who is getting in the car and one additional person to do the swap. So two people on the battery and one person on the fire extinguisher. Um, so this was the end of my stint. So you pull into the pits, you know, undo the belts, get them ready for the next person, undo the radio, undo the steering wheel, hit the kill switch, um, and hop out of the car. And once the driver is out of the vehicle, you can start the re refueling process. Um, so we first lift the whole truck bed. We added a hinge on the back bumper so that the bed pivots up and out of the way. And we have our nice prop rod. <laughs> uh, we undo the electrical connector and the two coolant hoses, the inlet and the outlet. We've got coolant dry brake connectors so we don't let air into the cooling system. Uh, then one person will get down and undo the two big bolts holding the battery in place. And as those bolts loosen up, the battery pops up on a spring-loaded roller plate, so then it can roll smoothly out of the truck. Uh, we have just like an impact gun that we undo these bolts with, and that's definitely something that we think we can optimize and get a little bit faster in the future. Uh, we roll up a battery cart that's empty, so we welded up these battery carts. Um, we have a retaining hook that we hook onto the truck so they can't roll away, and then we pull the battery out of the truck. So it slides right on out on the roller plates. Uh, we move the used empty battery out of the way, and that'll eventually get pushed back into the pits for recharging. And then we roll into place the new fresh charged battery and uh, line it up, uh, release the latch that holds the battery in place, and then slide it right in. And these are, I think, yeah, five or 600 pound batteries, so they're pretty heavy, but with the rollers, they, they do slide on without a huge amount of work. And then we basically just do the same steps backwards. So first we put the bolts back in place. Um, here was near the end of the race. So we had some stuff move a little bit on us. So the alignment wasn't perfect. We had to kind of wiggle the battery there to get the bolts in. Uh, we torqued down those two retaining bolts. And uh, after that's done, we'll, we'll reconnect the coolant lines. We'll reconnect the electrical connector and then uh, drop the bed and we're off to the races. Nick, you made that sound so simple <laughs> and clearly it is simple for you guys, but wow, there's a lot of steps there. And I really like some of the, some of the small details to make the, it easier, like having the springs that, that once the bolts are, are loosened enough, it comes out so that it can roll. It's pretty elegant. Thanks. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to say we were the first thing of that, but I think Michael Breen beat us to the punch on that one. Because he, he had some sort of battery swap system with skateboard wheels. But yeah, it, that makes it so much easier to pull that battery out. Uh, but also, like I've been worried about, makes it easier to drop it. So you got to have the choreography and the practice to make sure no one gets hurt. Yeah, that makes sense. And so you finished this race um, around the same number of laps as before? Or did you guys end up beating it despite the aerodynamics of a brick? Yeah, so with I think it was nine and a half hours less of race time, we did another ten miles, did or something like that. Said so seven hundred eleven miles would beat the record again. Yep. Wow, which was like totally unexpected, right? Going into a race that's nine and a half hours shorter, that was just not really in our in our thoughts. And then you know, as we got further and further on the race, we're like, actually, we're on pace. We might be able to do this. So it was, <laughs> it was awesome to, yeah, re-break our record with a shorter distance. And now we're just that much more excited to get back out for the full 24 um, and, and see how far we can make it. And when's that next race for you guys? Yeah. So our next race is end of May. And it's actually going to be at Thunder Hill. Uh, Lemons is doing a 25.01 hours race. <laughs> so 
we're going to have an extra hour and one minute to try and go a little bit further. I think the goal for this time will be a thousand miles. So we'll see. Hopefully I'm not jinxing it. Yeah. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs>